the B side. The B side. Oh, the B side. The B side. Yeah. Excuse me, what? What do you have there? I got some honey sweets. What? What is it? It's anything you want it to be. My name is Nine Mendoza, and I am here with Amir, better known as Yellow Majesty. We're speaking with him all the way from Sweden, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So I'm really interested in uh, the the creation of Yellow Majesty, uh, first appearing about a year ago now um, with your first album, Tonight's Blessings. And... Talk to me a little bit about the um, spark that sent you off on your own way, because I know that you had played with some bands and and things along the way. But uh, what was the impetus for Yellow Majesty? Yeah, so you're correct. I started the project last year and I had the release. I, I think it's more or less exactly one year from now, something like that. And the... The driving force behind the idea was because I, I played so many different bands and projects, both as a singer and guitar player, and I felt like I just want to do my own thing now. I reached a point where I felt like now I can play pretty much all the instruments. I write all the songs and I can do some production and I can learn more and I have some ideas which are not congruent with the other projects which I've been into. So I took the leap and it was much more fun than I expected. So I'm stuck since then. Yeah, it's it's a it's a neat thing because you really have an entire package going, right? You're not just doing the music and then kind of seeing what happens. You're, you've created a whole look and a whole aesthetic and then a deeper meaning behind um, behind the art too, so it's it's it, it's more like an art installation, in my opinion, than just uh, than just an album. Yeah, you're totally correct about that. So it's it's a I usually define it as an alternative world, which I or alternative reality, which I try to project through my imagination, and with that comes all of these different pieces of aesthetics and visual elements and um, sound, which together project this reality which you can visit and become a part of and it's based upon my imagination so there aren't any boundaries or limitations besides the ones i set and that's very nice when you are in total control over the creative process you can pretty much dictate what direction you want to take things from one song to another from one album to another why don't Having that space of freedom is very much um, um, intriguing for me. It's inspiring to to keep on creating. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a fantasy land, but at the same time too, you're using that fantasy to augment statements about 
society as a whole and the human condition as well and and the use of uh and and this is in your the, in the um the animated uh piece for bastards or the honey suite rather that it's this uh the grotesques right the 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 art concept of the grotesque is something that's exploded and bigger and and um pushed out further than than we normally take it yeah so i usually like to create friction through my music so i like to combine um things that are surreal with things that people actually can associate with in the real world so to speak mm -hmm. but still leave a piece of space for their own imagination and interpretation so i i don't usually ground my music or songs in only one statement in particular but i like to have that you know um, variety of doors which you can knock on and open and try to understand what this piece of song is all about and as as you say some of them are a little bit more obvious in terms of like the visuals what i'm trying to go with in order to provoke people to start to make some soul searching and just think for themselves and and and, and try to understand the reality from their own perspective i think that's pretty much what the core idea and and um, concept is all about to provoke people and stimulate them to do some soul searching and uh, if they can do that through my music that's totally fine and if not they can just stomp along with it and sing <laughs> so they have those options they can choose <laughs> but yeah the, the, that that's the the baseline the hook on on that song too is definitely something even if you're not paying attention to the lyrics you can just get down with that it would get down with that about the collaboration with uh Inari Cirola am I saying her last name correctly yeah um tell me about working with her on that project because I I thought it was um really thought provoking and for me I I have six children so I I'm sort of uh I I have to like Christmas <laughs> but but I detest Christmas because it feels so excessive and it's so gluttonous and that the, the beginning you know when when the when the child voice is going in the beginning and there's the you know the goo dripping off the hand and it's like I want this yeah. you know more and more and more and there's there's never enough I remember um I was at a relative's house who just went bonkers with Christmas presents just like bonkers you know and one of the children had unwrapped and i'm not kidding you had unwrapped like 50 presents wow. and she got to the end of it and she said aren't there any more <laughs> <laughs> and that's at the, the beginning of that video i'm like oh it's christmas <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually i think we were collaborating around christmas <laughs> when we made that video <laughs> no but uh, i mean you're you're you are <laughs> you are addressing some really good issues here and all of those issues you just referred to are in the video so we're incorporating that spirit the, the gluttonous spirit of human beings more more or less I'm, i mean human beings are complex but there are so many things that are worth exploring that are 
not always that nice and peachy, you know. <laughs> and I think this this video in particular combines both the peachy stuff through the colorful images together with the more grotesque stuff that is direct contrast with those peachy colors. And Inari is a fabulous illustrator and director. So she has made the uh, cover art for the first and second album, as well as the animation for uh, Honey Sweet. Uh, and uh, she actually has the ability to take my abstract ideas and, you know, uh, manifest them and express them in highly tangible manner, such as this video. <laughs> so she understands my ideas and it's been very nice to collaborate with her. And we're actually uh, uh, doing a third collaboration now on an upcoming single uh, for this summer. So it's, I'm very, very happy to work with her. What is the scene like where you are? And I mean that in the context of um, how did you come to the music that you play and the inspirations, you know, what, what drew you in? Is, are there particular clubs around there, particular musicians, or were there other parts of your life that uh, brought you to where you're at? So the scene is pretty much dead around here, especially now during the pandemic. But uh, I mean, in general, uh, um, the music scene has become much more, how should I put it, without being too provocative, uh, too framed, uh, too, too framed with lots of boundaries in terms of how you should play, what you should look like, what trend you should follow in order to make some success. But luckily like enough- that's a, Do you feel like that's a self-imposed thing that's going on? Like a, a lull in-, in uh drive or do you feel like that that's a like a corporate overhaul of the scene i think it's both so on the one on the one hand you have the political climate in in society which pretty much sets the boundaries of what is okay or not to um create in terms of art because art is many times a direct representation of or direct reaction either re reaction towards the uh, the societal worldview or it is a direct manifestation of how society wants things to be and you can reinforce that or you can oppose that uh, i think what i miss today in, in in sweden is the punk attitude so it's one thing to play punk music but to incorporate that spirit into different genres is something that i miss uh, which I see more of in other countries, but here it's pretty much same, same. So it's a little bit boring to listen to mainstream music in general. I never do that. <laughs> because that therefore I go usually back to my own preferences, which I like. There is much more there to taste than the contemporary music around here, for me at least. Um, that's one thing. The other thing regarding my own inspirations, I mean, I like people who like to push the boundaries. I mean, uh, in a constructive and creative way and and pretty much leave that space for your own interpretation and imagination to flourish over time. So there are several artists which I always go back to. For instance, Tool is one of those bands I, I really like. They're eclectic, they're cerebral and they, they grow upon you. Uh, and there's much to explore. And they, even early stuff of King Crimson are um, yeah, there are plenty of groups and bands and artists I, I enjoy listening to because they have substance over time. So they're sustainable, at least for me and my taste. So, and besides that, I, I'm into a little bit of art, but films and, you know, cinema is a big, huge inspiration and philosophy and literature as well. So those are my main go-to inspirations, I guess, sources of inspiration. What what's the um, what's the solution? Do you think for the for the scene? You you said that some of it was self imposed. Um, is there yeah. and and that you missed that that you missed the punk, the punk voice? And I, I guess the thing that I dig about punk is that I never saw it as a, a particular sound. It's more yeah. of uh, it's more of a thought and definitely thought provoking and. I guess I'm leading into a different kind of question here. The, the, the thing that I dig, dig about punk is that it's not just 
hey, look at what you're doing, but it's look at what we're doing, look at what I'm doing. It's it's the constant state of self-analysis and cutting through all the smoke screens and bullshit. Yeah, totally. I totally agree with you. And that's that spirit and mindset is what I miss. I, I wish like musicians, even those who are um, right in front of the, uh, I mean, th those bigger artists that they could actually incorporate that spirit in a genuine way. So the music becomes much more authentic and not just pretend, you know, because many of the artists today, correct me if I'm wrong, at least in the mainstream genres, they don't even write their own music anymore. They're like have seven different uh, songwriters, two different producers or whatever. And they just act, they're actors more or less. They're the interface between the actual music that's going on behind and the people. And what I miss today is like people that are genuine musicians and also artists and famous pretty much <laughs> because the famous artists today are, as I said, they're not, many of them are not, at least the majority of them are not um, musicians. Some of them are, of course, there are many talents, but that genuine, you know, um, punk spirit is something that I, I wish could just reemerge and take, come into different manifestations and expressions in our contemporary life. That would be really nice to see more of that. And also a little bit more like you can open up for people's imagination. Uh, I mean, that's one of the things I'm trying to do with my music. It's to keep it on a high abstraction level. So it sometimes become enough surreal so people don't even know what, what's going on anymore. And then people become confused. And that's one way of provoking people to think for themselves and, you know, try to understand the music. So I, I'm uh, naturally oriented and gravitate toward those kind of expressions, creative expressions. And I, I hope we will see more of that, but I'm not sure what the solution is, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's not to say that those other things don't have their place too, right? Like I, yeah. there's just nothing wrong with, with performance artists like uh, George Michael, Frank Sinatra or, or whatever, yeah. those things all have their, their, place and you know i like to you know dance to wham alone in my living room when nobody's watching but um i think that we get into a place where it becomes dangerous for society as a whole when that's all you have is this spoon fed mm. um but and to steal from you the the a honey sweet uh thing that's just like you know take more and more and more of this same stuff without questioning anything of what's going on not even in the music right don't question what's going on in the industry don't question what's going on behind uh behind the doors here and yeah. um and the thing that i really liked about about the statements that you're making with bastards is that it's just that it's like there's a lot more going on here and mm -hmm. you need to be able to see that and recognize it yeah definitely it sounds like your process is is um is quite thoughtful but where do you where do you get into that space like for me oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna show you something real quickly and so this is a painting that i did and and this painting for me is sort of indicative of how i write music too i but for me this painting started i i wasn't sure what i was gonna do and i put this little smudge of yellow and then everything else just kind of came out of that right yeah. that's that's how I write music too. It's it's really like I do one little thing and then I build layers upon that. And once I've got the sonic part down, then I then I start to get the cerebral part in and I start yeah. to figure out what this what the song is trying to tell me to talk about, you know. So what what's that process like for you? Yeah. First of all, I like that painting, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I liked it a lot. It it hits a nerve. I mean, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, but um, for my my process is it's never planned actually, so it's not linear at all. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, I have many different places and time during my how should I put it? So for instance, for this bastards for the for that uh, album, it all started with the melody and was the it was the theme melody for the theme song or the main track of the album bastards mm -hmm. and from there on just things started to emerge like visuals in my head 
and uh, feelings and energies started to emerge. And I tried to figure out like, where could I go with this? And I think uh, the main, the essential thing is to tell something that is true. I mean, try to convey some kind of truth uh, into your music or through your music. And uh, in this case, I just go along with the reactions I get both consciously and unconsciously from the sounds I create. And from there on, things just emerges. I really don't make an effort. But once everything has emerged and I'm like, okay, so this is the bigger picture I'm, I'm getting at. Then I started to analyze and try to rationalize the things without losing it, the, the spirit of the original energy I felt when it all happened, you know, because you want to capture that and incorporate that into the music and all the visuals. So it, it really comes through, but the process is never linear. Sometimes I can take a walk and come up with some rhythmic pattern. Other times I've like been sleeping and hearing melodies in my dreams and waking up and just going directly to the guitar while I remember the dream. <laughs> it's a really cerebral experience. It's uh, very imaginary. It's uh, very f- fantasyful. It's like, you don't really know how to categorize it. I like those kind of things, whether it is through movies or music or art or whatever, things which actually you can dig into and make an effort to interact with. I can remember this dream that I had where I, I was taking these giant leaps in my dream. I was just like leaping a quarter of a mile at a time in my dream. And then as I went on into the ocean, there were dead whales that had like bones sticking out of them. And I was, and I was leaping across them and landed on this like parapet of a, a some kind of a fortress. And I just remember looking around at the dream and, and wondering if I was awake or if I was dreaming still and I couldn't figure out, it, it was it was like so intensely surreal, it was realistic, if that makes sense. It, but I do that a lot with dreams. I do, I, I, I wake up on the cusp of still uh, emerging from that dream and trying to trying to get to my my instruments without becoming too conscious. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, like uh, yeah. You're, you're, you're trying to maintain that that thing in your head where you're like, I, I don't want to wake up because when I no. wake up, it's going to screw everything up. Yeah, 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 I'm totally on you with that. So keeping that balance is, I think, that's the challenge for us musicians that are oriented and gravitated toward this kind of interaction with the creative process. And also, I mean, sometimes you can see a shape. And you can like taste the shape, mm-hmm. like if you see a circle or if you see a rectangle or whatever, a much more complex shape. And you can see patterns and you can start, you know, shape, taste the different shaders of the shape. Mm-hmm. And from there on, you, I mean, at least for me, you become creative and, and you generate sound that some weird manner justify the taste you got when you looked at that shape. It sounds very strange for some people, I guess, but... For me, it makes perfect sense because all of these, you know, different kind of mediums which you use to express are, is basically uh, tools for expressing art. 
and you can discover the you mean I mean the sources for inspiration in many different ways as long as you are open minded and not put any boundaries to begin with if that makes sense then when you want to make the final product of course you can make uh, you can create boundaries and frame it in a certain way so it fits your taste and preferences but that initial creative process when you start to create the, the thing you're going for that's the most um enjoyable part for me at least the tedious part is when everything is done and you need to listen to it in so many different devices because you're <laughs> you're in the middle of the mixing process and master mastering process and you i mean that's the tedious part uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a nightmare for me at least <laughs> but as soon as that stuff is over with you can take a long break afterwards and pat yourself on the shoulder say you did a good job or something like that <laughs> <laughs> buy yourself a tea <laughs> <laughs> you said that you've got you're working with Inari on your next your next yeah. uh single what is that going to be so some uh, background towards the single Uh, this time I'm actually having um, a guest vocalist on it as well. She's going to sing with me. Her name is Ali Hart. So Ali is actually an actress uh, living in in the States, California, and we came in touch through social media. I watched her movie, one of her horror movies, and I was like, "This person is someone I could collaborate with." I think I just got that intuition. And then we just hook up and communicate it and now we recorded a song and we are in the process of uh, creating a music video. I'm going to shoot my stuff here in Sweden and she's going to shoot her stuff in, in the states and then we're going to make the final editing here and Inari is going to make the cover art for it. And this single is going to be much more in contrast to like the songs on on, on Bastards it's going to be much more like dreamy, atmospheric and um Yeah, a little bit more surreal, but still a little bit uncomfortable as many of other of of my songs so far. So I look forward to that. Our plan is to release it during I think end of June or beginning of July or something like that. That we can make that leap now is just so amazing yeah. to me that you and I are speaking to each other instantaneously, you know. Yeah. Definitely. I totally agree with you. I mean the technological landscape has both afforded many opportunities and and has also framed our uh, ways of being comporting ourselves as well if you want to take a critical stance towards the implications of technology because i'm i'm doing this on my spare time the yellow magic stuff uh, on top of that i work full time in 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 research and academia and uh, information technologies happen to be my the phenomenon which i which i studied through my research and, and implications of technology and one thing that is very good is the enhancements of communication and also all these spaces you can create for collaboration like if it wasn't for social media or uh, you know the sometimes i mean i go back to the idea or theory that some things are meant to happen in one way or another but the technology definitely had something to do with it mediated the opportunity for me to come in contact with for instance Ali and make this single together so uh, it's fantastic that we have these opportunities definitely especially during a pandemic where you are more or less constrained to sitting at home and you know not pe- meeting people at all socializing with them <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah yeah it's <laughs> been a tri- it's been a trip for me man because you know this I I've I've been in film and TV and and theater and stuff since I was six and I just I just turned 50. So mm-hmm. you know it's it's always been a really big part of my life it, live perform live theater performances live musical performances. I started this show like four years ago and it was just like it was just rolling and I was getting like invited to these huge music festivals and you know people requesting uh interviews for me and then the pandemic hit and it was like i just like ran into a wall i'm like what the hell just happened you know? yeah. and, but with the cool thing that's that's happening now though is that like everybody's like look at what i've been doing during the pandemic yeah <laughs> you know, exactly like everything's sort of you know it took a year to for every all the seeds to uh to start springing but now it's all coming out so uh all right man well 
Yellow Majesty, Amir, thank you so much for speaking with us today. It was a pleasure. And uh, please, please uh, keep in touch and keep us updated with new uh, stuff from your projects because we're uh, we're fans around here. So definitely. Thank you very much for having me.